John chapter 6, we'll start in 35. And Jesus said unto him, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And like I said yesterday, the mass, you hunger. You take it every week, every day, some. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Brought you right back to John chapter 4. 3, 2, 4. But I say unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. Here are people who are looking at Jesus Christ and they don't believe. He just fed 4,000 people. They don't believe. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We're going to have a better testimony than these people that Jesus is speaking to right now. We're going to be called up and say, did you ever see me? No. Did you believe me? Yes. He's going to call these people and say, did you see me? Yes. Did you believe in me? No. We're going to condemn these people one day. Because we have never seen Jesus and we believe. That's an interesting thing. Uh, what was I? He, All that the Father has given me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will no wise cast out eternal security. For I came down from heaven, God, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. This is the Father's will which has sent me, that of all which he has given me, I should lose nothing, eternal security, but should raise up at the last day. <clears throat> and this is the will of him that sent me, the Father, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him, that's not me today, I have not seen the Son, may have eternal life, may have there are people who seen jesus christ and didn't get eternal life there are 11 disciples 12 of them 11 disciples 12 of them saw jesus 11 of them went on to eternity to be with jesus one did not one slept ate lived breathed breathed the same air that came in and out of jesus lungs and died and went to his own place received all the gifts true natural Pentecostal and died and went to hell he ate at the same table touched Jesus I never did that so in the Jews verse 41 the Jews then murmured at him because he said I am the bread now the Jews murmured. The Jews, get that. We're talking about Jews, but let's go back to I don't we're not let's go back to chapter four. There was no murmuring when he said, I am the water of life. That woman, that wicked sinner, said, I want some. Let me have some. And then he went and dealt with her sin. And she got saved and brought others. He tells him, I'm the bread of life. If you eat of me, you're never gonna you're never gonna have any problem. That woman never stuck a straw in Jesus and started drinking. How come it's, it's, there's no water in the mass? Chapter 4. Got to bring both of these together. Chapter 4 is a sinner that believed Jesus. Chapter 6 are a bunch of people who wanted something and they didn't believe. So which one does that mighty church take hold of? It takes part of the Jews, stole from the Jews. And they're unbelieving. So the Jews that get that, the Jews. The subject is the Jews. And earlier, the, the, verse 31, our fathers did eat men. We know history. That's the children of Israel. The Jews murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. The bread. He said, I came down from heaven. The father sent me. There's a well. Bread does not have a will. You put a piece of bread down the table and say, okay, your will today is to be a sandwich. Well, you got to do it. It ain't going to make its own sandwich. You ain't going to wake up in the morning and say, hey, look, I made myself a sandwich because you told me to will me to be a sandwich. So we're talking about, again, I need to stress on part two of this. There's a physical bread, white, pumpkin nickel, Sesame seed, wheat, rye. And then there's the spiritual. Ye must be born again. Physical, mother. Spiritual. 
born of God. The water. There's a physical. Get a, get a bucket down the well. The spiritual. Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit. The physical bread. He fed 5,000. The spiritual. Jesus. You get your you get your physical and your spiritual conf confused, and you got damnation. You got damnation. And they said, "Is not this Jesus?" Yes, it is Jesus. They knew who he was. They just don't want to know that he is from God. Now watch. How do you know they don't want to know he's from God? The son of Joseph? Absolutely not. Those papers that were in Bethlehem, if not certified in Jerusalem, were said the adopted father. He is not physically, we have recorded the scriptures, the virgin birth. They do not believe in the virgin birth. They don't get saved. How's that one? It's not Joseph, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know. Jesus' parents were known by the Pharisees and the priests and the scribes. They must have came every year. They must have did what they're supposed to do because they knew his parents. How's that? How is it then that he saith, I came down from heaven? Luke 135. You have to disbelieve that he is the son of Joseph and the son of God. That's how you do it. They won't. You understand that? Imagine right in the middle of this whole chapter right here we, we get the virgin birth and we got people who don't believe in it Catholics would love is this not the son of Mary they would have, if that was in there oh this would be a reverence book and, and sold to Catholics by the millions on blacks Jesus therefore answered and said unto them murmur not amongst yourselves it wasn't public voiced <laughs> They're talking amongst themselves. They're not letting. And Jesus comes right. Well, stop murmuring amongst yourselves. What would Jesus do? I love John that little stupid brace that they got. No man can come to me. Uh -oh. Except the father which has sent me draw him. You got somebody who's lost? You praying for them? It's good. But pray to the Father and say, God, will you draw that person? They've got to come to God by God's uh, uh, invitation. Remember all the suppers he said he sent his servants out? Come to the invitation I've sent you. Somebody's lost. You know, pray to God and say, God, will you open the way for that person to come to you? And I will raise him up the last day. Wait a minute. Yeah, I was saying that draw him. I will raise him up the last day. This is part of the election. I will be a candidate to be the Son of God by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. God says, Okay, fine, I'll take you. Well, I don't want to be a candidate. I'll trust whatever I'm trusting it. God says, Okay, fine, you don't win. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man therefore that ha hath heard and has learned of the Father cometh unto me. How did they hear of father, the Father? How did they learn of the Father? What would be the way? What would be the main source to learn about God? Even these Jews would have that resource. The written word. You see how it's got to be the written word. Don't give me movies. Don't give me scripts. Scripts are not the word of God. Don't come up to me and tell me your child's Moses. No way could your child be Moses. God had a great testimony about Moses. Don't do a play about John the Baptist. Jesus said, of all the women, that, all the men that have been born of a woman, there's been none left. You're lying. Let's just stick to the Bible. Have the children get up and quote the scriptures instead of pretend to be the scriptures. How about that? Not that any man has seen the Father... Save he which is of God, he has seen the Father. Now look at that. God is a spirit, we learn in chapter 4. But Jesus said, if you, if you've seen the Father, 
you can't see the Father. But he which is of God, I am of God. I am a child of God by the gospel. I've seen the Father. He's in the Word. He is the Word. He is Jesus Christ. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me has everlasting life. What is that word? What is the key word? Believe. After you heard the word, 45. The word, then believe. The word, then believe. There is a particular order. I had a woman last night I, I dealing with on the phone about her, her, her software. There's a order that you're supposed to do it in. She did not do in that order, and she's messed up her, her whole programming. And I had to sit there, I, I think 15, 20 minutes, explain to her, this is how it's supposed to be done. You can't do it the way you want to do. And that's what Jesus is doing right now. You cannot do it your own way. But Lord, didn't we? Depart from me. I never knew you. But Lord, didn't we have vacation? Depart from me. I never knew you. This is the word belief. I'm going to punch that out every time because John is strict on it. And if John in the Bible is strict about it, I'm strict about it. Did God give Moses a television set or did he give him words when he came down off that mountain? He gave him words. How important those words? Moses, you just stay up here 40 days and 40 nights and we make sure we get this all written. And it's so important that Moses broke the first commandments. God says, you get your butt back up here. And I got to rewrite that again. Jeremiah, they took that. They burnt it in the fire. You sit down at that table. You sit down in that chair. You get your pen and you rewrite. Not, oh, what was it when they? Oh, no, rerun. It's not a rerun. It's a rewrite. I'm being strict. I'm being honest because a lot of people think they're saying, and unless you have the word, unless you have the word, very, very, I say unto you, he that believes on me hath everlasting life, present tense, spiritual condition. If the Lord tarries, is your body going to have everlasting life? If the Lord tarries, aren't they going to put you in a grave? Isn't your body going to die? Your body, the physical part, right? All right, let's get phys physical. Your body's going to go in a grave if the Lord tarries. Well, that first 47 is not about your body. Yes, he's going to resurrect it. Yes, we're going to get a new body. But the Lord tarries for the rapture. My body is going to die. Now, my soul, which you cannot see, is going to live eternity. Be absent from the present with the Lord. Look at that. Get this before we go any further, especially as we go further. There's a physical and there's a spiritual. If you don't get this, you're going to be damned. And you're going to violate a law in the Old Testament calling yourself a heavenly Jew. As a group of people are, as I was raised up. See the word? Absent from the body, physical, present, my soul with the Lord, spiritual. I am... The bread of life. Now get the I am. That would anger the Jews. Because he just said I'm God. The bread of life. I am that manna that God gave your, your fathers. But they died. That physical bread they picked up in the wilderness. I think it was a meat. Something like that. They died. I come that you may have life. Go ahead. Eat all that manna you want. You're going to die. But I come. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness. Yes, that's what, uh, what verse was that? I can't, Four, 31. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead, physical, graves, bones, butter, knife, a cooking pot, fried it, the Bible said. It was white. It was like coriander seed. That's physical. Get it. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. Spiritual. Now, why is this whole thing about bread? What is the whole text 
of chapter 6 that Jesus is having this conversation with them about bread. He just fed them bread. They wanted to make him a king. He goes off. He comes back. They don't come to Jesus seeking Jesus for salvation. They want bread. And he's not going to give it to them. They give it an argument. So if you're God, God gave us, gave our fathers bread. Come down and give us bread. That's, that's what the whole topic is. It's not a religious right. They wanted Jesus to feed him, feed them forever. This is what this conversation is about. I am the bread of life. Your fathers eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. What bread can you find like that? I mean, physical bread. You figure somebody would keep it. It's like a bunch of idiots come down here to Florida to find that, that eternal fountain of you. It's not there. It's Jesus, the fountain of of everlasting life that fountain of life was found in the bible and it's not a physical place in florida it's jesus christ catholics got it wrong again they got it wrong again i am the living bread which came down from heaven so it's a physical bread that he came down his body but he's the spiritual bread if any man eat of this bread the spiritual part of Jesus. His eternal soul that died on that cross went into hell, deposited our sin, walked across that, that gulf and went and got the, the, the saints out of the prison in Abraham's bosom and went back and seated at the right hand of the Father. That spiritual part of Jesus. While his body was laid in the tomb. If any man eat this bread, he shall live forever. The bread that I give is my flesh, which I will give for life of the world. Now let's jump ahead, shall we? Let's read. Uh, let's read verse 63. I think we're going to read this verse a lot. He said, we just read. I lost my place. I give that I will give is my flesh okay ready watch this 63 it is the spirit spirit you got that spirit is spirit right how hard that quicken it resurrects gives life the flesh profiteth nothing go back to where we were I give i will give is my flesh that i will give is my flesh english teachers one like that jesus is going to tell you later on that flesh profit is nothing it's the spirit scripture is scripture we eat jesus that's the flesh of jesus yes read a little further it says the flesh profit is nothing which i will give for the life of the world how did he give that how did he give that flesh on the cross it was whipped it was battered it was beaten and no one went up to the cross and started taking pieces of his body even the romans at that time didn't you figure so just, mm, they're over there gambling oh i'll have a toe no The Jews, the Jews, the Jews, therefore strove amongst them. Oh, that made them angry. It is ticking them off. He's saying what he's saying. You know what he's been saying all the time? He is God. He is eternal life. The Jews strove amongst themselves saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Oh, Nicodemus, you're thinking physical, physical again. Oh, woman at the well, you think you need a bucket. You see, the Jews are doing the same thing the Catholics are doing. He's going to give us his flesh. He's going to pick off his flesh and give us to eat. That's what they're thinking. In a way, they're thinking the law says you're not to eat that flesh. So the Jews have answered the mass question. You mean to tell me? You want us to eat your flesh. That's gross, that's sick, and that violates the law. 
So what's Jesus do? Then Jesus said to him, very, very, I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man. All right. We go back over here to 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. Then Jesus said, very, very, I say unto you, this word, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Well, we read in, the Le in Leviticus, life is in the blood. And you will go around the merry-go-round backwards of the Roman Catholic on this verse. Because as a Bible-believing, rightly divine, pleasing God, studying the Word of God, you are rightly divine that this is physical. This is in no way physical. While, meanwhile, the Catholic who is told never to read his Bible, to work on traditions and what the church says, is taking this passage to mean physical who doesn't know that what is being told by their church if they are Jews they claim they're stealing from the Jews that is a violation of the law now what is the error of the way don't they hang up the Ten Commandments taking away number two breaking ten into two isn't that one of their things the Ten Commandments well that's the law the Ten Commandments is not the entire law. There are laws in Leviticus. There are laws in, in Numbers. There are laws in Deuteronomy. One of the laws is now you're not to eat blood. Before the law, God told Noah, no eating blood, no shedding of blood. When the apostles meet with James at the council in Acts, they say, all right, things, no drinking of blood. Before the law, during the law, during the church age, it is settled. It's the thing that's going to happen in the tribulation. No drinking of blood is allowed. That's one of the big no-no's. That's up there more than even mention adultery. That is, you are cast off from being a Jew in the Old Testament if you drink that blood. You drink the blood, you're going to hell. So, with knowing the scriptures, studying to show thyself approved unto God, rightly dividing the word of truth. If you study the scriptures, Jesus said, drink my blood. If he really meant that physically, he violated the law. He's a sinner. He would be in hell today. And he came to fulfill the law. No way, scripture by scripture, did Jesus literally mean drink my blood. Never. And the law forbidden it. And before the law forbid it, what would Jesus be talking about drinking his blood? Spiritually. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses me of all sins. I drink of his, of his spiritual blood, which I've never seen. Acts 20, 20 is, is God's blood. I put more blood in my life for the sins to be washed out. More than that, I can't explain. And you're, you got a diehard Catholic in this, you're not going to be able to break them. I'm sorry, you can't. Because this is their God. It is the spirit that quickeneth, and the flesh profiteth nothing. Read on. And they'll go with it. Whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. Well, look at it. That's what Jesus said. But what Jesus said, if it was physical, would violate the law. A law that stated if you did that, you were damned. It can't be physical. And I will raise him up the last day. Boy, I will raise him up? Well, what do you say over here? It is the spirit that quickeneth. It's the spiritual blood. It's the spiritual bread. The flesh that's going to raise you up. Believing in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the gospel. That's what's going to give you life. What is that? That's his body being breaking. That's his blood being spilled out. And by the way, when Jesus uh, appeared before the disciples that, that night, that after he rose from the grave, he says, touch me. He says, bones and flesh, I think, flesh and bone, there's no blood. There's no blood in Jesus' body today. It's been all emptied out. 
You couldn't get a drop of blood out of Jesus' body today if you went to the Red Cross. There is no blood in Jesus. It's been all poured out. When they pierced that side of his, what came out? Water and blood. Water for blood. Water and blood. The, these verses are hard to get to when you're dealing with a Catholic. But somebody who knows the Bible, loves the Bible, knows the Lord and studied, there's no trouble. For my flesh is meat indeed. His physical body was definitely human flesh. But him, Isaiah 53, being beaten for me, that's my soul. That's my salvation. That was supposed to happen to me. And my blood is drink indeed. Well, at the Last Supper, he said, take this. This is the blood of the New Testament. Drink of it. He said the cup. He didn't say the blood. He said, my blood's going to be poured out within a few hours. For all man. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. There you go. You got the Catholics again. They got strong verses here if you want to think physical. But it's not. As the living Father has sent me, I live by the Father. So he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread, that bread, which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat man. See the, see the spiritual, see the physical? What does it say over here? It says in verse 63, spirit first, then the flesh, the physical. There's always that spirit first, then there's always that physical second. This is the bread which came down from, from heaven, not as your fathers did eat man, that physical bread. I'm the spiritual bread. That's the physical bread. And ye are dead. He that eateth of this bread. Now he didn't say flesh that time, did he? Flesh is minus from that passage. Uh-oh. Went through all these flesh, 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 flesh. Now he minus the flesh after talking about the physical of the manna. There's a difference between the manna and the bread that he said shall live forever. There's a big difference. One starts with an S. The other one starts with F. These things saith he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. And Peter, who, who had a big mouth, speaks up saying, Lord, how dare you tell us you're going to eat your flesh? That's not in there, is it? Do you ever see Peter rebuking Jesus here? Do you see Peter rebuking Jesus? Have you ever seen Peter rebuke Jesus? Peter, the first pope, got the idea, and he didn't rebuke Jesus. How's that one? Peter didn't say, Lord, we're not going to, listen, the Jews said, how can we eat his flesh? And Peter stood there like, you guys are such more, even I got this one. And you're going to build a church upon me, and I got this one? Ah, you guys are dumb. Oh, no, Lord, I'll never deny thee. Many there, therefore of his disciples, when they heard the when they had heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? Now they're physical. You see how it keeps going back and forth. Physical, spiritual, physical, spiritual, physical. They can't get it. The early chapters of John are all is it physical or is it spiritual? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, just like the Jews, so there's debate amongst the Jews, there's a debate amongst his own disciples. What is he talking about? Are you going to build a doctrine on something that man did not understand? And make it your statement of faith? What is... Uh, when Jesus knew in himself what his disciples murmured at, he said unto them, does this offend you? Why would it offend anybody? You just told them to eat your flesh. That's what, they, that's what they're thinking. Here, let's put the, Jesus on a platter and chop. Let's start chopping pieces off. Does that offend you? What? And if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before. Well, if you're eating Jesus and digesting Jesus, how's he going to send up? Out of dunghill? That's a crappy religion. 
Now watch this. He turns to his disciples. Does this offend you? He's going to explain it to his disciples. He's going to explain what he just said to the ones that are supposed to understand. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The spiritual bread. The flesh, you're thinking a loaf of bread. You're thinking that you're going to really eat me. The flesh profit is nothing. The words, W-O-R-D-S, that I speak unto you, they are the spirit. They are the life. Do you know what all the words of the Bible are called? It's called the bread. It's called the water. It's called honey. It's called, you know what you're supposed to digest? You're not supposed to digest the body of Jesus Christ. You're supposed to digest the words of God, which your church tells you not to. Instead of digesting the words of God, uh, Ezekiel ate a roll or Jeremiah. The Catholic Church says digest God instead of the Word. They got it totally backwards. Now let me read something to you. It said history is full of clash of cultures that completely misunderstood each other. In the 1600s, the Jesuit priests ventured to the New World to convert Indians to Christianity. Their form of Christianity. The priests risked torture and death, but they felt the effort assured them into the entry into heaven. In other words, these Indians kill them, they're going to go to heaven. The Indians thought the Jesuits were killing their people, history Brian Moore said, because they always baptized people who were dying. Communion made the Indians think that the Jesuits were demons because they kept their God in a box and ate them. Even the American Indians, the Native Americans, had more things. What on earth are you doing eating God? You know, me go out, hunt deer, boom, kill deer. Big white father in heaven, I thank you very much for the bounty my family and my tribe are about to have. We don't eat big white man in heaven. <laughs> we eat the bounty that he gets. The North American Indians said, you are a fool. You are a devil. Or demon written that one but you are a devil come on if, if, if reality if reality really set in let's say a Bible non-christian let's say you got a non-christian don't believe in any religion and they invite their Catholic friend over and say hey we're gonna have dinner over here we're gonna we're gonna eat my neighbor we're gonna have our neighbor for dinner come on over oh that's gross but you say that about Jesus you're eating a Jew Saturday or every day. My aunt did it every day. She ate a literal, physical Jesus Christ according to her priest. That's gross. That's stupid. That's devilish. You don't think. Whereas 63 says the words. Devour the words of God, not God. When you devour the words of God, you don't make a dunghill. You make life. By devouring the words of God, I can go out in the world and tell people how to get saved. I can take Christians and help them to grow. If I ate Jesus, what's that going to do? It's going to make the sewer plant more working. We got more. There's, more. there's more about this chapter to go. 64. There are some of you that believe not. The foreknowledge doesn't affect the events Jesus shall choose. He knows they already don't believe. And he's not going to say, because you don't believe, I'm going to damn you. No, he's going to give him a chance. Remember all the times we've seen with Judas' friend? Remember the times he tried to get Judas to repent and get right and not go do what he was supposed to do? He wasn't supposed to do it. The free will of Judas had him do it. Jesus tried to stop him. See, a lot of people think Judas was foreordained before... It was known that G Judas would do it, but Jesus tried to get him not to do it. It was foreordained to know that Pharaoh would treat Israel rough. But he sent Moses and Aaron, you know, you need to stop. You need to really turn your life around and get right. Pilate, foreordained on the world that you're going to put Jesus on that cross, but I'll send you your wife. I'll put Jesus in front of you. Don't do it. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning... Who they were that would that believed not, and who should betray him. Uh-oh. 
He knew. But did he treat Judas any different? By the way, do you know what cannibal means? Priest of Baal. Mass is short for massacre. And he said, therefore, he said, there, uh, and he said, therefore, say I unto you, that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him but of my father. So your lost friends, your lost family, say, God, please reach into their heart. And he'll answer you. Now, if they obey, that's between them and the Lord. If they don't obey, that's between them and the Lord. But invite God into their lives for salvation. That's part of the prayer for a lost soul. I've done it many times. I've seen God go into the people I pray for. And I've seen many not do. I've seen some do. For that time, what chapter are we in? Six. What verse are we in? 66. 666. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. So there were more than 12. And I got a particular note between 66 and 67. I don't know if it, I know if it's doctrine correct, but I got a note here. Church split. Even don't cry, baby, when your church split. Jesus had a church split. His disciples, some of his disciples, said, "See you later, goodbye." And he still went to the cross, cry, baby. He watched some of his disciples. Now, don't tell me you don't think he had a tear in the ear. Like Paul was talking about demons. Don't tell me that didn't hurt Jesus. I got 32 AD. I don't know if this year is correct. I mean, this would be two years into his ministry. And some of his disciples went back. Oh, take it back. It said many, many went back. That's a lot. Don't cry be over church church splits. It happened to Jesus. So after the church split, then said Jesus unto the twelve. I, I don't read into passages, but how do you take that? And you can take this in the garbage if you want. What I'm about to say, you can say in the garbage. However, how many disciples he had, only twelve stayed. That's how I take it. It said many. And he said, Jesus said unto the twelve. How would you like to have many people following you and, and just you turn around and you can count them on both your hands and, and a couple toes? Will you, will ye also go away? Ever had that happen to you, Christian? You've had Christian. I've had this happen to me many times. And they're on fire with you, and then you know, trouble comes, doctrine comes up, parting of the families, parting of the ways. I can't do this because the Lord don't want me to do it. I can't have this job. And you turn around, it's like there's only a few there. And you look at them like, you gonna go too? This would be a sad, mean moment for Jesus. You guys gonna go away too? And he knows. But look at his feelings. Are you going to go away too? Just don't read the Bible. Feel the Bible. Then Simon. Who? Peter's going to speak up. He has not said a word in 66 verses. Now I don't know if they used duct tape back then. But they must have duct tape on Peter. Because he doesn't open his mouth to now. So Peter understood 66 verses. And when Jesus comes up and said, you guys going to go to it, now Peter speaks up. Thank you, Peter. Lord, to whom shall we go? Watch it. Watch it, the first pope. Thou hast the words of 
eternal life. Let's go back to 63. It is the spirit that quickens. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. They are life. The first pope got it. Yay! He ain't no pope. He don't follow their doctrine. The first pope understood 63 completely. You know, you know how you know he understood the, the, the thing properly? Because he's the first one that gets up and preaches. He's the first one sent to a Gentile family in a Gentile nation. He's got two books in his name. Thank you very much. We can say, open your Bible to 1 Peter. We can say, open your Bible to 2 Peter. We can say, hey, some church is based upon Acts 2.38. Acts 2.38 was preached about Peter. We can talk about the Italian man Cornelius. The Italian man. We can talk about him with Peter going there. <laughs> Isn't God great? Isn't God so sarcastic? Isn't God so great? Yes, he is. Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe, and we believe, and we believe, and we believe, and are sure. We believe. Words believe, sure. Words believe, sure. Words believe, sure. Peter's got it. You know why he didn't fail when he denied Jesus three times? Because words believe, sure. Words believe, sure. He got it. That thou art the Christ, that Christ. That's what the woman said. The son of the living God. Jesus, I mean, Peter said Jesus is God. Jesus answered then, have not I chosen you twelve? Okay, we got the twelve. Here they are. They're all there. All right. And one of you is a devil. Oh. In goes a knife in the gut. Oh. He spank of Judas. Oh, we're going to tell you who it is. But this is a side note. He spank of Judas, the son of Simon. That's interesting. For he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. And we conclude the chapter. A very hard chapter. A chapter, you know what? That I've had Roman Catholics run to. You believe the Bible? Yeah, I believe the Bible. And they run to this passage. Well, what does it say there? Says you don't know how to read your Bible. That's what it says. It says your church is wrong. That's what it says. And you know what? If a Catholic runs to chapter six, back off. All you're gonna do is fight. And if you if their family, if their friends or a loved one or spouse or child and you real you gotta have God get in their life. That's it. That's the only way. But God, Jesus said it twice. Unless the Father draws them. You're not going to do nothing. It's going to have to be the Father. If you got a die-hard Catholic, and I've dealt with them, you got to get the Father. And I ain't talking about the Pope. That's their Father. It's going to take some serious prayer. It's going to take the Father. It's going to take the Word. They don't believe in the Word. They don't believe in reading the words. I'm going to shut down because I'm going to sneeze. 